Welcome everybody to AI Innovators in Telecommunications. I have with me today, Cal from Nokia. Cal, welcome. Thanks for having me, Ron. Could you please introduce yourself? Of course. Uh, Cal Day, um, I run product and engineering for one of Nokia's uh, business groups, Cloud and Network Services. Lovely to be here with you today. Yeah, it's great to have you, Cal. And you know, it's Nokia. So uh -huh. let's talk network, let's everything network. I mm -hmm. love it, I love it. You know, telecom is cool. And I think we keep proving that over and over again um, in, in our partnership and how we drive things. Right. And we just announced something that was very cool uh, with our autonomous network framework, and Nokia is a big piece of that. Could you describe a little bit about what's happening from an autonomous network perspective? Right, of course. So um, we have a uh, simple mental model that we use, sense, think, and act. And uh, the whole idea is um, really being able to take complexity out of the network, out of the hands of the operator, and uh, arming the operator initially with superpowers and eventually um, realizing the march that the, I think the industry has been on for a while. For the first time, it looks like it's actually going to happen, um, which is uh, a network that runs itself and therefore is entirely autonomous. There is no human in the loop, at least for the most important things and eventually perhaps for everything. But Kel, why, you know, so we've been after this, as you alluded, for a while as an industry. What's changed? Why can we do it now? Why do we have such hope? Yeah, I think, you know, the thing, Brian, is that um, for the longest time, the think part of sense, think, and act, if, we, if I'm to just follow that model for a bit, the think part was a stretch, if not outright notional. Um, we've been leveraging AI for a while, uh, machine learning uh, in particular, uh, traditional forms of artificial intelligence, uh, discriminative, um, with great value back. However, arriving at a point where um, the model is actually able to reason is a recent phenomenon that we're seeing playing out with large language models, small language models, agentic frameworks, um, and that introduces an entirely new paradigm, um, which is opening up a, a, a marvelous number of new opportunities to take complexity out by um, reducing human error um, and being able to do things at machine speed that hitherto were flat out not possible. Well, we I have think a ways to go, we're early in the journey, but uh, it's starting to look more and more real. So Kel, that's really interesting too. And you know, what else has changed is that the models, as you say, they've gotten better. We have more tokens, we have higher speed, we have more reasoning. Right. That's a huge, huge difference. And so, as we've been pursuing this autonomous network, I think we have better tools now. Indeed. But where should the operators start? What are your thoughts on that? Right. Um, I'll underscore first what you just said, the speed of iteration of improvement is absolutely stunning. I, th I think, you know, I'm safe territory saying, I don't think any of us have seen this before in, in our careers. Um, I Look, I think, Brian, the, the sensible place to start, the best place to start, is starting by defining what are we solving for. Known use cases that are operationally hard, technically complex, require um, particularly leveraging data across multiple verticals, correlation, and a level of reasoning that candidly within the short windows of time that an operator has to respond to some form of network anomaly um, some form of a security incident, um, defining use cases around that that will deliver value and then exploring, um, experimenting quickly with what does generative AI and the cloud bring to, those, to that equation um, is where I think we will see the early gains, the early ROI, as opposed to just open-ended experimentation. Some of which is good too, but the starting point would probably be known, well-defined use cases. And, and it starts with the data and being able to ingest that data. It starts Absolutely. with the graph neural network. It starts with being able to get those relationships understood. Right. To your point. Right. Um, that's pretty fabulous. And we're making the progress. I want to shift a little bit more to core network. And what happens as we're moving to a cloud native network? And what do you see happening there? Moving away from more monolithic deployment, more into the cloud native side. Is that better? Is it worse? Is it just different? What are your thoughts on that? 
first and foremost, you know, like a telecommunications network, particularly one that is at, runs at scale, you know, nationwide, um, cries for the kinds of paradigms that cloud computing brings to bear. Cloud native um, is, is a fast follow to that, right? Um, so for, on the first point, it's efficient use of infrastructure. Um, consumption on demand. Um, one of the greatest impediments for our operator customers is um, managing spend effectively and efficiently, using infrastructure smartly. Um, so that form of elasticity, elastic use of infrastructure, um, is realized through a combination of using cloud computing paradigms that are well known and well understood and have been for appreciably the last couple of decades. And now, cloud native, which has matured now with the advent of Kubernetes, the maturing of that whole tech stack, um, elasticity um, is an enormously valuable asset if it's done right. And so the ability to scale out, you know, like a infrastructure footprint that backs a core network um, in response to a demand spike, in response to uh, disaster recovery that leverages the cloud, um, instantaneously on demand and to be able to scale that workload in these kinds of use cases are only possible through the leveraging of cloud native infrastructure and in you know immutable infrastructure well and it, it is really important point and some of the progress made from a, you don't just take these workloads these network functions and throw them on a kubernetes it, it's a, there's deeper engineering that has to happen there and there's things that we've done on our side things you're doing on your side 100 which makes that partnership really work what are some of the views on the partnership? And I know we've enjoyed a really strong one over the years. Yes, indeed. And where we're going with that. Yes, indeed. So um, the way we are trying to work together um, is number of first and foremost, playing to our core competencies and our strengths. Um, I think, you know, like on our end, we have had um, more than a couple of decades of deep experience uh, building, operating, and defining uh, carrier grade networks which are quite a different beast from what we see in the enterprise. There's complexity there as well. Um, this is different, different uh, in good ways and other. Um, I'll, I'll say very quickly that, you know, like an appreciable percentage of the world's voice and data traffic runs through our routing software, as an example. Where we greatly benefit in our work together is leveraging Google's expertise in the cloud and the groundbreaking work that Google is doing uh, in AI in particular, um, and in generative AI, uh, you know, most lately. And um, working together to, again, you know, I'll go back to saying there are pointed use cases where we are working together as really a joint engineering team and figuring out how do we take advantage and deliver operator benefits by running the core in the cloud. Um, we've had some meaningful work that we've done in particular over the last year. We've made some announcements together in NWC, uh, you know, a few that I think uh, we're doing this week that we're very excited about around the autonomous network where we've meaningfully partnered. We are where it makes sense using cloud native services from Google. Again, playing to your strengths. Uh, we are going to make extensive use of Vertex AI um, and learn together. I think, you know, even as you folks and, you know, your scientific teams invent this technology, bring it to scale. Um, we're right there with you, deploying it at scale and figuring out what works and what does not together. And I think it's been a fascinating journey for the last several years, and we're looking to really pick up the pace now. Well, I tell you what, Cal, it's, it's been a pleasure having this partnership and, and a deep engineering partnership. And I think that's what's required to move the industry forward. Okay. It's not an individual game. So we appreciate that partnership greatly. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Valerie. And that's it for now for AI Innovators and Telecommunications.